here we are. Well, look at this. We're about three kilometers now from the source of the River Severn. And you can now really start to see how the, the environment in this area is starting to change. The gradient is now much, much steeper. And we're starting to see waterfalls forming, like you can see here. That will then lead to increased process erosion, such as hydraulic action, like I said in my previous video, and abrasion, so the, the sandpaper effect being abrasion, hydraulic action, the sheer force of the water going into cracks. But also, you start to see how the water, there is a lot more water in the river, so that is called the discharge. So there's more water now flowing through the river, and that's because we've got lots of tributaries bringing water and joining, so little streams, little tributaries, joining up, there's one just behind us here, which join up, um, uh, providing water for the River Severn. So, the water speed though, even though it's moving down uh, these uh, mini waterfalls, it looks quite fast, it isn't actually that quick, and that's because of friction. There isn't that much water in reality compared to the lower course of the river, but there is still friction in play which slows the water down when it's moving. I wanted though to look at something different, the different types of weathering. So in this environment we can see here there are lots of trees growing. Trees have roots. Roots will grow and they'll start to break apart these different parts surrounding the river and this is called biological weathering. With not only roots, you can have animals burrowing and that can disrupt the flow and the, the, the sides of the river, which could lead to increased mass movement and disrupting the river flow. You also have chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is when you have um, acid rain, so you've got lots of chemicals in the atmosphere and that will start to weather and break down the rock around the riverbed uh, and, and in the area. That causes increased problems for, for rivers. The last one is physical weathering. That is called freeze fall weathering. When it gets incredibly cold, water will go into cracks. And as water goes into cracks overnight when it gets very cold, the water will expand up to 30%. When it expands, it will then start to break up the rock. It then contracts in the daytime. It then freezes, expands again, and that starts to break away the rocks from the side of the river, which will then mean more material will be flowing along the river. It's load, the material transported by the river, which will then move along the river through process of transportation all the way to the end of the river, towards the middle course and the lower course of the river. Some lovely jog action.